Tomb Raider Underworld for the PS2 was trash. I can't believe this game was ever released on the platform. The previous Tomb Raider games on the PS2 was so great. We have Legend, Anniversary, and Angel of Darkness, which I still think was great based on my experience, but I'm sure not in the eyes of others though. So, where should I start? Tomb Raider Underworld was developed with next gen in mind, such as the PS3 and Xbox 360. That's why it's so surprising that there is a PS2 version as well. However, lack of marketing for the PS2 version really made fans like me wondering during that time, as all of the screenshots and video material shows the next gen version. And when I finally got to play the game, oh dear lord, I can see how bland and bad it was. Of course, I understand the hardware limitations are at play, but there is something more going on behind the scenes than just hardware limitations in this bad port. What's more, is that this port is based off of the Wii version, just being dumbed down even more. What's pretty ironic is that the Wii version feels more complete than a PS2 version. Although all of the locations of the game are intact, here are some cut areas that are severely cut out from the game to make it shorter. As if the game was not already short enough in the next gen versions, they butchered it even more on the PS2. For example, backtracking were completely removed. The Medsy escape was replaced with a pool that gets you to the surface. While in the next gen version, you have to backtrack all the way to the beginning of the level through an alternate route. Amanda's other side of the ship was cut as well. That means you can't fully explore Amanda's ship in the PS2 version. On the Thailand level, the whole elevator platforming puzzle was completely cut. You just have to drop down from the series of ledges and that was it. While the next gen version had this entire puzzle to make the elevator to work to get to the bottom. Not to mention, the platforming in this part was so superb in the next gen versions. I love how grand the level design is in this area, and the green tones and hues is just chef's kiss. The PS2 is... Uh, okay, uh, they lack some plants. Um, the level design was uh, identical with some cut areas and... Okay, that was it. Croft Manor was fine because that level is so short anyways in both PS2 and its next-gen counterparts. Both versions are almost identical except you have to solve an extra puzzle to open the gates, leading to the room with the stained glasses in the next gen version. On the PS2, you just go through it. It's just like a walk in the park. I'm not going to cover much of the southern Mexico level since both PS2 and next gen versions are structured differently, which I think is good, at least for me, because it makes the PS2 version unique with its level design. But here are some more major cuts, especially in a Jan Mayan level. This tower platforming section was gone in the PS2 version. You just turn a lever and that was it. Gate is open. The next gen version lets you climb this tower and carefully make your way to the top to activate the switches to open that gate. Just look how grand this tower is, like the platforming, it was so cool. And lastly, Oh my god, the final level, the Arctic Sea, where a huge part of the level was dumped down into a cutscene in the PS2 version. Yes, it's a cutscene, this whole segment here outside where you have to solve a puzzle to enter the gates. It's now a cutscene. Yeah, a 360p video cutscene in the PS2 version. That's right. The entire underwater section is made into a cutscene which is the worst effort from BuzzMonkey, the developers, have made in this game so far.
As you may have seen by now, you may be wondering, what's good about the PS2 port anyway? Well, there are some few points that actually made the game enjoyable, at least for me. For instance, some beta elements are made intact, such as the extended Croft Manor cave section and the extended bike section in John Mayan Island, which are both absent in the next-gen versions. Not to mention, a very different level design for Southern Mexico as well, which I mentioned earlier. If you have played the next-gen version of Tomb Raider Underworld first, you will find these areas to be fascinating as if you're playing a whole different Tomb Raider game. The bad parts? Well, aside from the cut content I mentioned earlier, we have the horrible frame rate, loads of bugs and glitches, and these pre-rendered low-quality cutscenes that look so bad if you're playing TRU PS2 on an HD TV. Oh, not to mention, the camera, the light source, and even the health packs and switching weapons in the PDA were also absent in this PS2 version as well. This brings me to the next section. TRU for the PS2 shares the same modified engine from its next-gen counterparts. And this is where I think that the game lost its potential to be great on last-gen platforms like the PS2. This new engine they used was designed to run on modern consoles during that time. But BuzzMonkey, the devs, who are responsible for this port, decided to squeeze it in to the PS2's hardware. In my opinion, I think they should have opted for the original TRL engine just like in Legend and Anniversary. Because as you can see, these two previous TR games ran pretty well on the PS2 without sacrificing the graphics and features. No pre-rendered cutscenes, no cut content, and big areas doesn't take too much of the frame rate on the PS2's hardware. But instead, they used the newer engine without even optimizing it for the PS2's hardware. It's like they just made this game for the purpose of getting sales for the last-gen platform and to complete the LAU trilogy for the PS2. You can tell from the effort, or is there even any effort at all, that this shouldn't have been made, at least in my opinion only. I'm no expert in game development, but if BuzzMonkey, the devs of course, were given more time to optimize the newer engine, or just use the old engine that was used on Legend and Anniversary for the PS2, then the game would have turned out great, I guess. But instead, we have this, and this, and long boring corridors used as loading gates. So this is Tomb Raider Underworld for the PS2. It's sad to think about it. Though I have to admit, I enjoyed it the first time I've played it on the PS2. But it just feels empty especially when I played the next-gen versions on my PC. So, it's a sad fate for Tomb Raider Underworld for the PS2. And you do know that Eidos, the publisher, were aiming for yearly Tomb Raider releases during this era of gaming. So I believe that time constraints really played a huge role in this one. Thus, turning the PS2 version the worst Tomb Raider port ever made. And that's it for today's video. Thank you everyone for tuning in and I do hope you enjoyed this one. So, now that I finally started this commentary series, expect more commentary soon for different games too. Have a good night and see you around next time. Goodbye.